Good morning everybody, uh, we are talking about uh, flame acoustic interaction, we are specifically looking at premix flame, so if you consider a premix flame such as a Bunsen burner play located in a duct and we are seeing how the thermoacoustic instability happens. Let me give you some references uh, for this topic, the first one is a review paper, review paper would mean um, it uh, talks about all the papers and what they do and in certain order and in certain classification. So this is a paper by uh, Louis Wynn titled Modeling Premixed Combustion Acoustic Wave Interactions, this is in Journal of Propulsion and Power, they had a special issue on combustion instability, so this is that issue, uh, it is in 2003, uh, volume 19 and uh, this is another very interesting paper by Dukrux, Sebastian Dukrux, Daniel Durox and Candle on theoretical and experimental determination of transfer functions of a laminar flame proceedings of the combustion institute. The combustion institute has an international combustion symposium every two years uh, whose papers are published in this bound volume, so this is that, uh, it's a very prestigious conference, um, gives a uh, short idea of how you can calculate theoretically as well as also determine experimentally. I will at the end of the lecture speak very briefly about how to do things experimentally. Uh, uh, this is a very interesting paper, I can give you all these papers, I have them with me, uh, Boyer and Quinard and uh, this is perhaps one of the earlier papers on the dynamics of anchored flames uh, in combustion and flame, combustion and flame is a very important journal in the area of combustion and uh, uh, this is a really nice paper by Thierry Schuller, Daniel Durox and uh, Sebastian Kander, a unified model for the prediction of laminar flame transfer functions, comparison between conical and V flame dynamics, again in combustion and flame, uh, this is uh, you, you must read this, uh, this is my own paper, I talk about kinematic coupling effects in heat release transfer function on a premixed flame, speak about two dimensional effects and so on, again in journal of proportion and uh, power in volume 21. Uh, uh, this is uh, Professor Dowling who is a quite famous personality in thermoacoustics, she has written a paper a kinematic modeling of a ducted flame, journal of uh, fluid mechanics volume uh, 394. So I think uh, these should be adequate references, there are many more references, maybe there are hundreds of papers, if you want you can uh, meet me and I can give you these papers. I hope uh, you have adequate references and please, uh, uh, this is very easy to work out this paper, it is quite nice, it is uh, very first. Uh, one of the very first paper, uh, uh, definitely go through this paper and I am promising to ask in the exam something from this paper, okay. Okay, so that is so much for this today, uh, now uh, we will, uh, in the last class we were looking at uh, trying to work out a differential equation, simple differential equation for looking at wrinkling of uh, anchored premix flame and uh, we are looking at a geometry where this white line shows the mean flame shape and uh, uh, zeta is like the displacement of the flame with respect to the mean flame shape and uh, uh, you have this relation uh, u psi bar minus SL equal to 0 uh, that is um, consistent with our idea that the flame will stay if the feed velocity is same as the flame propagation velocity otherwise um, if there is no feed velocity flame will travel at the speed of SL, but if you supply gas at a speed of SL flame will stay there and this is the uh, differential equation we got for the perturbation for the wrinkling uh, u zeta by I mean dou, u, dou zeta by dou t plus u eta bar dou psi by dou eta equal to u psi prime and this has a uh, really nice physical meaning, uh, what this mean is, what, what this means is the position of the perturbed flame is determined not only by the present value of the perturbing velocity, present value of course affects but it is not just that, but also by earlier perturbations which occurred upstream at positions eta minus eta prime and are convected along the flame with the velocity u eta bar, that is there is a flow velocity in this direction and that convects the wrinkles up, up the flame to the present position eta and we saw in the movies that I showed that the flames are actually there is a wrinkle and it is going up, let me show that, so you see uh, 
the wrinkles that are formed here they are actually moving up along the flame so they are actually convected they are going by convection okay so our different liquidation is saying it its solution is saying it so <coughs> this actually introduces some kind of non instantaneous behavior which is like a time lag and we know the importance of time lag in thermoxy system so we must pay attention to this so the convection the flow is what creates this time lag here okay so the uh, uh, having looked at things in time domain we will now also try to do things in harmonic domain which or often harmonic domain things are simpler uh, although we here we got exact solution and so on with characteristics so we can solve it but uh, in harmonic domain things are much simpler and you can get simple solution which will also tell you a lot of things uh, so let us do that. So let u psi prime equal to u psi hat before i my t. Of course, you can say that we have to take real part of that, but I would not write that explicitly. It is implicitly understood that you have to take real part, and we will substitute this here. So you will get uh, i omega u psi hat times a for i omega t plus u eta bar no eta so this could be this velocity fluctuations could be imposed by acoustic field okay so if we can cancel these things out and uh, so we will yeah sorry I, I put a hat here because so we cross out e power i omega t and then we we can uh, write this equation nicely as this is our equation I will do some transformation just to get very simple solution uh, otherwise also you can do it you, you can see you can directly integrate this how would you integrate this equation huh? Derek how would you integrate this equation in closed form actually yeah how, how will you do it Yeah, it is a OD. Directly write a solution. You don't have to do any recursive. Yeah, right. Absolutely, integration factor. So you can write it down. Thank you. But I will just try to do some massaging to get shorter solution. Uh, same procedure. But before that, I want to say that we can notice this uh, term omega over u eta u eta bar what kind of non dimensional number is that like we study in fluid mechanics lot of Reynolds number or combustion 
uh, lot of non dimensional numbers in fluid mechanics and combustion uh, we are studying uh, such as Reynolds number, Peclet number, Damkola number blah blah blah. So, this is also some such number omega over u bar what is it we will see okay. So, let us make a transformation here. Let's call this R, and we have e eta going this way. So this is eta. This is theta. This is y, and this is R minus y. So, we can say R minus y over eta, what would this be equal to sin theta right. Or r minus y equal to eta sin theta. So, you can also, um, so we non dimensionalize this way and uh, uh, you can get uh, d y by d eta equal to minus sin theta. So, <coughs> if you substitute these things, you will get d psi hat over d eta plus I omega or u eta bar psi hat equal to so this we can write as d one into d y by d eta. So this is this is the chain rule. Okay. So <coughs> So, this we can say sin theta and we can do one more transformation y bar equal to r minus y just to make things look good just to get rid of the minus sign. So, now so, we have this equation and we also know that what is this u psi bar by u eta bar ah, tan theta yeah, exactly and we know that u psi bar equal to yes sir absolutely perfect. So, we know that u eta bar equal to s l over tan theta ok. So, now we can try to uh, put this and non dimensionalize So, we can non dimensionalize the y and zeta by some kind of radius or if you have a burner like a Bunsen burner and you have a flame like this and this is the burner radius that could be used to non dimensionalize the length that is very reasonable. Uh, so, if you do this you will get here or we can club things together and say
I just get rid of the sin theta so I can get this thing. So we have this is non-dimensional, this is non-dimensional, and uh, this is also non-dimensional, and uh, you have another factor here, omega r over s l cos theta. What is this? What kind of number is? What is Strawhill number? What is Strawhill number? Just a study fluid mechanics. What is definition of Strawhill number? What is Strawhill number? Oh, some f l over u or something like that, right? So this is something like that. Omega is like f times r over some velocity. So it is like the uh, there is a fluctuating thing. It has a frequency and a time period, and the flow also has a time period. So the flow time scale divided by the time scale of the fluctuation so that is what it is okay you can uh, so this is like a strohel number st uh, in some papers this term is called omega star like a non dimensional frequency, Strawhall number is like a non dimensional frequency. You non dimensionalize the frequency with another frequency which is characteristic of the flow, okay. It's clear. So, is this clear till how we got here? Now we can get the solution, right, with integrating factor as So, um, uh, it looks like most people do not know how to integrate this. So, I will. so, if you have a different equation of this one, what we can do is we can multiply this equation by e power integral f of x dx and then you will get e power integral f dx d by over dx plus f times e power integral f dx y equal to q e power integral f dx. So, this left hand side is what? It is d by dx of y e power integral f dx equal to q e power integral FTX. So, the integral of this the solution would be y e power integral f d x equal to integral q e power integral f d x d x. So, this is the solution to a linear differential equation the most elementary differential equation which is studied in engineering. So, we can use this solution to solve this. So, what is the integration factor here? Must say that I forgot those bars. So I have a bar here as well as here. Okay. So what is this? Right. So the answer is trivially simple. L star is like a dummy variable I have used for integration. You can put prime or anything. Like that. So, sorry.
So this is the closed form solution. Let's just we use this integration factor and we have written down the solution. This very simple. What does this formula physically mean? So this is really a correlation between u psi star that varies over acoustic wavelength and e power i s t uh, l star which varies over convective wavelength. So this correlation between two quantities one varies over acoustic length scale one varies over uh, a convective length scale and that is what it is. So now uh, we know how to get the uh, flame shape. Right. I mean, we know how to calculate this perturbation at each location. That's what it is. This is the formula for that. Is that right? Okay. So now, how do you proceed to calculate the heat release rate given this? We we know in principle the flame shape. Not in principle. In practice, you can. If you know these quantities, as long as you know this omega r over s l cos theta you can get this, this uh, you can solve for ah you find the area how do you find the area so it depends on the flame whether it's a flat flame or a circular flame so if it's a cone you have to use the cone formula so if it's a 2d flame we just have to just add up okay so you find the area fluctuation from there how do you do okay so we find area fluctuation Easier. That is the next step. So we can say that uh, q q dot equal to integral over the flame surface of the flame rho u s l. We don't worry about rho u and um, I mean we just say okay. We can do what rho u. That is the correct thing. Uh, delta is ds delta h is the heat of reaction per unit mass of the mixture it's a mixture it means fuel air mixture so we can think of this as mean plus fluctuation so we can say q bar the q dot bar plus q dot prime equal to integral s flame rho u s l delta s e s bar plus s bar flame rho u s l s prime so q prime by q bar is like s prime by s bar so we find the s prime as vishnu pointed out and then we have this q prime so we can now define a transfer function which is equal to q prime by q bar divided by u hat reference divided by q bar where u hat reference is a reference velocity typically it is chosen as the velocity at the base of the flame and this could be in the system identification language this is like a flame response frequency response function or transfer function. So you can use this uh, formula to reproduce the results in Schuller et al. 2003 which I told you at the beginning of the lecture and uh, I will sketch how the transfer functions look like and, uh, and you can calculate it this transfer function which is called phi okay. There in that paper he referred to it as g so I will just use g 
So, it will look like a value going from 1 down to 0 and this would be this uh, Strohal number. So, typically it look like 10 power minus 1, 10 power, 10 power 0, 10, 10 power 1, 10 power 2, 10 power 3. So, the flame responds very well to low frequency oscillations, but then cuts off the high frequencies and the and the face which look like this. So, the same axis 10 power minus 1, 10 power 0, 10 power 2, 10 power 3. So, it would look something like this. It does not behave right, I mean low frequencies it is responding very well, high frequencies it is not. Of wrinkling? Yeah, it is a very good point. So, Schuller has worked this out. So, you can see this is the same kind of configuration, whatever we and this is the solution that we derived in time domain. He has just used different variables and he has found a solution to the equation for this particular problem. Yes, Schuller has solved for a V flame, a V flame and a cone flame, both, both flames, and then he has plotted calculated the transfer function and this is the result that I have showed. But then he also says what happens if velocity is not a constant that there is hydrodynamics and vortex shading and so on. So, he works out for a case where here we assumed a constant velocity, but you can have velocity like uh, cos omega t minus k y. I mean uh, instead of having a co uh, constant value times e power i omega t or which is like some constant times cos omega t or sin omega t that is what we are used. Instead you say some constant times cos omega t minus k y or something like that. So, it is varying okay. and then he has showed that uh, there are some differences for a V flame, but uh, there is dramatic difference for a sorry that, that was for a cone flame and you would see here uh, th this is the uniform model for a uh, V flame and uh, uh, this is for the uh, uh, V flame with this uh, celerity or the phase difference and you see that the gain actually starts at 1 and goes higher than 1. In all the other cases it did not go higher than 1. So, there is significant difference, but this is like a some kind of model put in by hand the phase uh, in reality you will have to. Um, solve in a coupled manner and solve you have a had to have a hydrodynamic solver which will actually solve for the velocity and then that would go as input to this uh, do not have the difference equation here, but that u psi will not be a constant anymore and then you will have to um, solve for that and it will surely change. For example, this is the simplest case simplest this is a model not a calculation in, in the model itself we can see there is tremendous difference. So, yes surely it will make a lot of difference. No, no, it, this, this one affected uh, the uh, V flame quite a bit. Well, it, it, it changed the result, it changed the phase for a conical flame, but it did not did not change the gain dramatically. But um, in general, I mean, this is not really model vortex shading, he has just put in some effect in some way. Um, Schuller says he pulled a rabbit out of the hat or something, he is my friend. Uh, but if you do a more uh, serious time domain calculation hydrodynamic zone and uh, you couple it with this, I think there may be even more differences. I think people have not um, done such detailed calculations yet uh, in a couple sa couple manner, but it would be worth doing. We are trying to do those calculations. About the reflections, you mean reflection of sound wave by the impedance discontinuity. Yeah. Yeah. In 
So it depends on the uh, with the vortices. It's a difficult question. I don't have off an answer. With the sound wave, I can show you some results that uh, we did. Uh, I mean, I had the same question some time back. So we used boundary element method calculation to solve for this and uh, we looked at how this flame will get uh, flame will reflect waves from upstream and downstream and so on and uh, of course the So you can see there is some kind of bending and, and so on and if the flame is quite wrinkled it will be uh, quite a bit, the isobars will be bent quite a bit and uh, it also depends on the waves coming from upstream will bend on way, the waves coming from downstream will bend on way and this will actually affect the transfer function uh, calculation also. Uh, it is there in that other paper that I cited. Uh, This is the paper in this, you can read this, it is, so it is, you have to consider the 2D geometry and uh, how the reflections and so on are happening and we have looked at the, uh, how the gain changes uh, because of this and uh, how the acoustic field uh, changes and, and so on. So in fact, uh, uh, this plot is instructive. You can see that this was the, this calculation which I did and uh, you see there is quite a bit of change in the gain because of this um, I mean accounting for the reflections and, and the um, I mean there is the impedance jump and that modifies the how the acoustic wave affect and, and, and so on. So I mean you can read these two papers and get some answer but uh, again this is some kind of the simplest, uh, uh, simplest model for acoustic wave that can be uh, put in but in reality uh, you have a complex two dimensional multi dimensional acoustic field and when the flame is more wrinkled like you said at high frequency uh, it um, or if there is turbulent flow it will kind of be like a fractal and that is what we calculated how uh, that kind of surface would uh, affect the acoustic field locally and uh, even a smooth flame it will scatter and so on quite a bit and uh, near the flame the velocity field will be highly two dimensional because the uh, you know the uh, even if there is no flame the acoustic streamlines will bend right. If you have typically geometries of this form the acoustic streamlines will actually will not separate it will just go like potential flow lines. So the velocity field will be highly two dimensional but pressure will be quite one dimensional. So there is quite a bit of interesting things here. U prime field uh, from the uh, acoustic which, which is actually going we did not consider the acoustic at all we just impose the U prime on the flame and see what happens this has to be coupled with the um, acoustic calculations. So I mean I have looked at this very element aspect of the question you asked but I think there is we are planning to look at look at it quite more a bit more seriously also but it is a deep question what you are asking any other question okay. So, <coughs> Uh, the next a few questions I want to answer before stopping how to measure Q prime in the experiment. Can we put some meter which yeah. will sense Q prime? We measure the flow rate of Q prime fluctuating heat release rate how can you measure you have a theory how do you check if it is right. Will be 
no we are considering a case where uh, for constant velocity and we are not having that I will do next right next to this but how would you measure the heat release rate fluctuation yes Vikram I am asking how to measure the heat release fluctuation. Ah, absolutely, chemical luminescence. That is what is a marker, and if it is a fully premixed flame with no entrainment, CH and OH chemical luminescence are very good indicators of the uh, reaction rate. So, you can measure OH or CH chemical luminescence, and that will be a direct indication of the heat release. So, that would be how do you measure it actually? Yeah, so you can use a photo detector, photo multiplier tube or we can use a high speed camera and measure this and we should be able to our camera should be fast enough to respond to this. Now you have to actually uh, if you were to uh, so you can people measure this and compare it with the experiments compare it with the calculation that is what is there in the references which I have given to you. Now you can uh, couple this Q prime which you obtain from this calculations. So, you have obtained A prime and then you can get Q prime and then how do you couple it with the acoustic field. We have Q prime with our calculations which we just described today. Now, how do you go ahead and calculate the stability? Where? So, which uh, so we did uh, this n tau formulation. So, here you have q prime as a function of u prime. So, the transfer function is like that uh, it has an amplitude and a phase that is like the n and u n and tau uh, right and that we put into our McManus uh, type of analysis and then we can get the Eigen values and Eigen vectors and you can look for the flame stability. Alternatively we can uh, have this q prime to be solved in time domain we had a time domain solution also right or we can use some other time domain like a, a, a solution and then couple them together and march in time step by step the acoustic field and the flame. The flame is wrinkling that is affecting the acoustic field, acoustic field is getting modified that is further affecting the wrinkling you can do step by step marching of a fully tightly coupled system that is one way other way is to put the transfer function in the n tau model this what we got is some n tau representation. Uh, so, in our model we completely neglected certain uh, serious issues which was the criticism yesterday from Vishnu uh, one was uh, SL changes how can SL change huh? uh, if there is turbulence but let us consider laminar flames how will SL change Rajesh hmm? flame shape curvature uh, is one thing how else can SL change. So, suppose there are equivalence ratio fluctuations what happens? Reaction, reaction rate will change so SL will change and this delta H will also start fluctuating right I mean because equivalence ratio fluctuating so heat release per unit mass of the mixture will change. So, those things we did not consider but if you were to look at uh, we have set up a problem or experiment such that there are no equivalence ratio fluctuations but it is possible to have equivalence ratio fluctuations and then you have to take those things into account is that clear. Now if you do I, I mentioned that you can couple this and so on um, in time domain and then what happens your amplitude will blow up right. I mean if you are having instability the oscillations q prime u prime p prime everything will keep going to infinity. But in our experiments I showed some experiments in which it made noise and uh, I mean the noise was not infinitely large the speakers did not blow up you saw the experiments in the lab also. So, what happens there? Uh, what happens in the flame? So, now the flame wrinkles will start steepening they will start becoming shock wave kind of thing. So, non linearities and flame response will come into play and uh, the phase will start drifting. So, the linears whatever we derived is linear. So, we have to do a non linear solution to 
this equation which is not trivial you have to use some more complicated CFD schemes which are which can kind of schemes which can capture um, uh, shocks like we know weighted essential non oscillatory schemes those have to be used uh, to do this problem it is a difficult problem to solve with CFD, but people have uh, done that and uh, that is what you would have to solve. Sorry. Yeah, that. So first thing is, this can actually steepen and form shock-like structures. Uh, the, and the if you see those papers, they will show that uh, cusps, cu the flames will form cusps, and then the flame can flash back. That is one thing. So if the uh, if your flame is standing like this, it can actually come down also and it can blow off also hmm? uh, and it can stand up need not uh, it need not be anchored anymore I mean if, it, if the amplitudes keep growing it can stand off. So there are many effects that are considering and for the standoff I mean we assume that the flame is anchored but so this will work only when the flame is anchored but as the amplitude goes up the anchoring will go away and then you will have to solve the heat transfer problem there and if it, it flame can uh, if you are near the lean limit or something there can be lean blow or the flame can flash back can lift off it can do periodic lift off there are a lot of complications that we can do. So, it is a very even in the case of laminar flame this is a very exciting subject and a turbulent jet flame would be even more exciting uh, and I think people are studying it how to model it is very complicated I will not get to it, but I think this is to say welcome to the subject. So, uh, in the first part if you go back a few classes or few weeks we did not worry too much about how the n and tau came we just said there is a n and tau and put it in there or Maria Heckel said there is a correlation to put in there into the acoustic field, uh, acoustic field and we learned how to solve for the acoustics in both in the time domain and in the frequency domain At first we did frequency domain then we did time domain, but really we have to find n and tau nobody will give you n and tau and that depends on the specific problem at hand. So, we now learned how to do uh, a linear model at least for uh, a uh, uh, premixed ducted premix flame how the flame gets wrinkled and how it gives really gives rise to heat release rate and, and so on uh, that is one thing and, and uh, we solve the problem fully for a linear problem and of course transfer function I told you to uh, work out the Schuller's paper as all the details are given uh, very easy and uh, easy reading paper nice paper. Now, uh, we can also solve the new we have a we can derive the nonlinear equations we just threw away the nonlinear term, but we can in principle derive nonlinear equations and we can solve for the solve for them using whatever scheme it is and then we can couple it with the acoustics here the nonlinearities will come in combustion are coming much earlier than the nonlinearities in acoustic because for nonlinearities in acoustics to happen the fluctuating velocity should get very large comparable to speed of sound, but for the nonlinearities in fluid mechanics and combustion to come the fluctuation should com be comparable to the mean flow velocity which will happen much earlier. So, we do not really need to consider nonlinear acoustics, but uh, we could consider it we, we must consider nonlinearities in the flame response which will happen at much lower amplitude. Like if you are talking about amplitude of 100 Pascal you would not really have to worry about nonlinearities in acoustics or gas dynamics, but uh, you will have to worry about nonlinearities in flame dynamics. So, stop here. So,